And so I spake the word, and drove you out of the Garden of Eden, and clothed you with a coat of skin, or in other words, with flesh, the same as other animals. For now, in order that you might enter into the heart of earth conditions, into the real earth, the earth of my ideal, not the one of your dream, so as to quicken my ideal therein into active life expression, you, my attribute, had to have an organism and a covering appropriate to the conditions in which you were to manifest in your dream. Likewise, in thus giving you a coat of skin, did I, by so doing, provide my ideal with a suitable form for earthly expression. I gave you the power to express yourself through a definite organism by means of words. In the impersonal, there is no use or necessity for words. Ideals alone exist and express. They simply are, for they are the expression of the various phases of my being. But in this dream condition, where every expression in these early stages of outer being had to have a form and a substance that could be heard, seen, felt, smelled, or tasted, in order that its meaning could be clearly apprehended, there naturally had to be provided organisms capable of being used for the double purpose of expression and of understanding what was expressed. As my ideal unfolded, itself after your expulsion from er from eden you one of my divine attributes dwelling within my ideal of that attribute in expression in turn dwelling within the thought image of myself and finally manifesting outwardly in the earth form of words when impelled by my will in the guise of desire to express my meaning began rapidly to increase and multiply in your search for the most favorable conditions for the manifestation of your particular attributes you gradually spread over the face of the earth quickening and arousing the intelligence dormant in all forms of life contacted into fuller and more active expression of their particular phases of my ideal thus were formed the various languages of earth each containing many words, and all born of desire in the human mind to express in earthly terms the infinite phases of my ideal ever surging within. The more the human mind strove thus to express in words my ideal, the greater and more abject the failure. In time will the great awakening come, that all words are but symbols of the one ideal, and all ideas of whatsoever nature are but phases of one ideal, my ideal of myself in expression, and that all desire to express in words that ideal, without the consciousness of my will being the one and only source of inspiration, is futile. Likewise, all desire to express that, I that ideal in living acts without losing all consciousness of your human personality or your personal part in the acts and centering yourself wholly in me is vain and fruitless and will end only in failure, disappointment, and humiliation. Next chapter, Good and Evil. In the Garden of Eden, where you abode before entering upon your earthly mission, there grew this tree, whose fruit is called the knowledge of good and evil. While dwelling in this garden, you were still wholly impersonal, for you had not yet tasted of this fruit. Having once yielded to desire, the earthly agent of my will, whose main work is to make you eat this fruit, the moment you had eaten, that moment you descended or fell, or were forced from our Edenic estate, like the chick from the shell, or the rose from the bud, and you found yourself involved in conditions altogether new and strange. For now, instead of having dominion over the lower kingdoms, and of their supply in your every want, you had to till the ground to get it to bring forth fruit, and by the sweat of your brow had you to earn your bread. 
Having taken upon yourself this earthly mission, it now became necessary for you to enter fully into all conditions of earth life in order to develop a mind and perfect a body capable of expressing perfectly my ideal on earth, the real cause and reason for your entering into this dream condition. So, having fallen or stepped out of your impersonal or Edenic estate, you yielded completely to the lure of this dream world and now permitted desire wholly to lead. You no longer were capable of seeing the reality or soul of things, for you had put on a physical body, an earthly covering with a human brain, which acted as a veil to your soul consciousness, and so bedimmed your sight and clouded your mind that the light of truth did not penetrate through and everything was falsely colored and distorted by your human understanding. In this dream condition you saw all things darkly as though a mist, as through a mist, and with this mist enshrouding everything you could not see things in their reality, but only their misty appearance, which now, however, seemed to you the real things themselves. This was so with everything you saw through your dream eyes, with things both animate and inanimate, with everything you conceived in your human mind, with even your own self and your other selves around about you, thus no longer seeing the soul of things, but only their misty shadows, you grew to thinking these shadows were real substance, and that the world about you was composed of and filled with such substance. This mist was only the effect of the light of truth being invisible to your human mind whose intellect, like an imperfect lens, only befogged and twisted everything and made it appear as real, keeping your consciousness continually busied with these marred illusions of your dream world. Now the intellect is a creature of and wholly controlled by desire and is not, as many suppose, a faculty of the soul. In other words, this mist, then, was the clouded lens of your human intellect which, because controlled by desire, falsely portrayed and interpreted to your consciousness every image, ideal, and impulse I inspired from within or attracted from without during the process of my awakening your consciousness to a recognition of my ideal within every urging for outer expression. All this I did purposely, however, through the agency of desire, in order to lead you consciously into the heart of earth conditions. While this false vision, inspired by desire, caused many missteps and much trouble and suffering, and you gradually lost confidence in yourself, in me, the impersonal one within, in fact, you forgot me, so that you did not know where to turn in your helplessness. Yet it was only through your thus losing the memory of your divine estate and centering all your consciousness in these earthly conditions, that I could develop your human mind and will and all your faculties, and provide your human body with the strength and powers that would enable me to give perfect expression to my divine ideal on earth, which eventually must be. So, through your mistakes and troubles and suffering, Desire for relief caused the idea of evil to spring up in your mind, and likewise, when these troubles were not, it inspired the idea of good. To all appearances of things and conditions you attributed these qualities of good and evil, according to whether or not they satisfied desire, my agent, in reality, my human self, or you, in your human personality. All these conditions and experiences in life which you entered into and which when pleasing seemed good and when displeasing seemed evil were merely incidents created by desire to quicken and use certain soul faculties which would enable you to recognize the truths that I within wished at the time to impress upon your consciousness. The apparent evil was a negative aspect of the fruit of the tree, which always lured you on by its fair appearance and by the sweetness of the first taste to eat and enjoy to satiation, or until its harmful effects manifested and became a curse. 